Wizard, in the last video, we spoke about the log periodic power law. How can we use it to try to anticipate black swan events? I've had quite a number of emails around how do I backtest this, especially if I don't know coding. So I've built a Google Colab notebook for you that will help you do exactly that. It will help you add that indicator to the data so you can backtest it. So the first thing we're going to need is to get some data. You can get that from wherever you want. I get it from Crypto Wizards because that's what I built it for. And here I'm just going to say XRP USDT. So I'm just going to get Ripple data because that's what we used in the last video. I'm going to select five years of daily data, but it'll give me a maximum of a thousand bars of data because I'm getting this from Binance. And then what I'm going to do here is just rename this. I'm going to just call it, I don't know, XRP USD and hit rename there. Great. So here is my data. I don't need these columns here. I'm going to get rid of them because we're not going to backtest them. I'll just stick with, you know, open, high, low, close volume, something standard there. And let me just hit save there. Perfect. Let's download the data now and have a look and see what does that look like in Excel. And I'll just bring that over to my screen so you can see it over here. Um, brilliant. OK, so here I've got open, high, low, close volume. And then if you have the extra columns here, don't worry about it. You can delete them manually in Excel and then hit command and S to save. So here's my data. This is what I'm going to bring into the Google Colab notebook. You can do this on hourly data as well. I've built this to also work on, well, any time frame really. Here, what I'm going to do is close this and then go over to Google Colab, open up this folder here, and let's just scroll to the top of this notebook. And you don't need to look at the code. Don't worry if that daunts you. If you're not a programmer, all you need to do in this folder here is drag in your data. And whatever you've called your data without the CSV, so it should be your data.csv, but the name without the CSV, you want to make sure you rename over here. So here I've got XRP USD. If you called yours Pink Elephants, then go and rename this here Pink Elephants. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go runtime and restart and run all and hit yes. And this will install all the packages it needs to. It will import your data. Uh, these packages are already installed on this notebook, so this was very quick. It's going to import everything it needs to. It's going to open up the file, and now it's go actually going to start running. Great. Now that that's running, if I scroll down over here, we can see this is it. It's now fitting to this log periodic power law. And this takes quite some time to run. Depending on the size of your data, it can take anywhere from, I would say, seven minutes up to 45 minutes to run. And that's why this has not been built into Crypto Wizards. It just takes too long to run. It's very, very computationally heavy. So I'm going to let this run and then I will resume this video once it's gone and done all that number crunching for us. So that took about 45 minutes, I would say, to run, but I was working on something else. So I've come back quite a while later. And if I scroll down, indeed, here you can see the indicator for when it looks like we're in a positive bubble, i.e. you might want to go short, and here a negative bubble, i.e. when you might want to go long. Brilliant. And it's gone and added that indicator onto our data and saved it here as output XRP USD. So if you don't see that, just click on this folder again and hopefully it will appear for you. And then click here and just go download. So that's now downloaded for us. I'm going to go over here to Crypto Wizards add data. And then in my downloads, I'm going to go here, output XRP USD and upload that here. Perfect. There we go. It's now uploading. And here is my data. So let's go to backtest manager. And I'm going to say here when the bubble negative confidence is greater than zero, that's when I want to go long. That's when I want to open this long position. And when the positive confidence, i.e. we're in like a bubble that's you know, too much to the upside, it should change direction to the downside. So I'm going to say when that is above zero, then I'm going to open a short position. And I'm going to say, right, put me a stop loss at 5% and give me a take profit at 100%, like some ridiculous number. And we'll talk about this in a moment. Let's go and run back test. And the back test is complete. And you can see here, we actually make ridiculous money. We get to like 25x. And we end up with 887% return versus 472 for buy and hold. Remember, this is cryptocurrency. Returns are ridiculous. They're crazy. They're all over the place. 
but we get double the return and our sharp ratio is twice as good as well. Now, what happens if I say took that take profit down to 75% and look at that. Yeah, we still do well. What if I take it down to 50%? But can you see the problem here? What is the right take profit? And I'm now fitting my take profit based on this crazy upswing we got here. And every time I reduce my take profit percentage, my sharp ratio is actually getting a lot worse. So unless I hit those really, really big ticket trades, it's a lot worse. And if I bring this say down to 5% to manage my stop loss, well, my win rate here is only 45.3%. And my whole thinking with this strategy is, if you have a win rate, which is below 50%, then the returns you're getting on your trades need to be greater than the returns you're getting on your losses. And so here you can see the indicator is like really strong. It, it hits over here, it hits over here, and it does go down after, it does go down after, it does go down after, but it also rockets up. So if I was short here and I caught this, I've lost a lot of money. If I short here and I caught this, I'd lose a lot of money. Let's go back here. Let's look at the 100% take profit example again. Look at how much I dropped from the top to the bottom here because of this uptick in price. You can see here when price rocketed up, I was actually short. And so I lost tons of money over here. And so that for me doesn't make sense. For me, what makes sense, just going back to the last video, is buying out of the money put or call options. This is my hypothesis on this. You find an asset, actually preferably a stock, because buying options in crypto is horrific. And they are horrifically expensive in crypto. I wish that wasn't the case. I know I always say that. But you find a stock that behaves like this. It, it has a herd buying mentality or it, there's a bubble going on. And when there is that bubble going on, that's when I want to be looking to buy deep out of the money call or put options, depending on what side of the bubble there is, negative or positive. And then I can be wrong 10 times. But the one time I'm right, does that way pay back all the losses I've made? Like, do you make stupid money? on that one trade if you're right and it happens quickly in the short term. I'll make sure you have the link to this. Everyone will have the link to this. And if you're just doing no code back testing, I've shown you here how you might wanna think about using this tool to do it. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.